So I was so lucky that there was another competitor down in Canberra that had a set of these Marlin comp spec 4.7 reduction gears, brand new, still in a box. Uh, his plans had changed. We'll be putting these in the case that let go on us a couple of weeks ago. Uh, for those of you that don't remember or haven't seen it, this is what happened. We're gonna do something different this video. Uh, we're gonna do a technical uh, build on the transfer case. So Brian's gonna take us through all the steps of uh, putting together this case with the four sevens and the trail gear rear disconnect. Appreciate his time in doing this for us. We're also gonna incorporate the twin stick setup. Uh, this is a trail gear lever set. I'll just explain to you how we can make this work. For your twin stick, this is the interlock pin that has to be removed. So this is the, the 2-4 selector rail. So you'll, you'll know just from experience that you cannot select high and low. You can't go across into that gate until you've moved the stick from 2 to 4. So when, when you do that, this one moves that way, that pin can slide across and then you can select, so it's, that's high, neutral, low. But once you've deleted that pin, you can move the two rails independently, two and four, and high, neutral, low. In this picture here of the input gears, Marlin being on the bottom, it has longer splines and there's no neck down section. The idle gear, Marlin on the left. Wider output gear, also has oil drillings in the leads oil up to the roller bearing. The output gear, Marlin on the right. The drillings make it lighter and lift oil to the top of the case. First stage of transfer case reassembly is to get the low range gears into the reduction box. So this is the very front part of the transfer case. This is the input shaft that goes into the gearbox. This is upside down just so it balances on the bench. So there's our new Marlin crawler 4.7 low range gears. So you can see the much wider output idler, it's idler gear. I've had to clearance the case a little bit more than, uh, than what was required for the, the trail gear gears. So we're checking for smooth rotation and operation. It's in neutral there, so if we go forward like that, sorry, low range. That's low range. There's high range, one to one, straight through. So what we're looking for here is at least a half a millimetre clearance all around the idle gear there at the bottom of the case wherever we've had to take a bit of material away and also on the shift fork here clearance between the gear and the, the fork we're all clear so that can stay together if there's any interference there that all has to come apart a bit more clearancing put it back together try again so the reduction box is all good. The next step is to put the back on the reduction box. That's the front of the four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive case. So step one, we're just going to use some um, plain sealant, no gasket. We're going to use some assembly lube on all the bearing surfaces. I like this stuff, it's halfway between a grease and an oil. It sticks, but then it just dissolves in the gear oil when you get it all together. The feature on these Marlin gears is it's got these oiler holes for the for the roller bearing. It's uh, notably absent on the trail gear gears. So in theory, Drops on there. A little bit of copper anti seize on the start of the threads there. And roll it over. Get the bolts in from the front. Part of the transfer case. I'm going to start, start from the bottom, start loading it up. Snap ring and retainer for the input shaft. Spare.
specially calibrated 3 8 rattle gun. Front the output bearing. Seems pretty tight. This is the only spot in these boxes where you absolutely must use a gasket because the snap ring there is thicker than the relief. Make sure we've got the oil hole lined up. That was preloaded with new seals, the front drive output. Hide the gear, wheel of that bearing earlier. Nice. Start making a gasket. Oil rails. Back case. There she goes. That's about the end of the front drive case. Very exciting, rear disconnect. This is my first time, be gentle with me. Bearings pre-installed in there. Snug. Goes with this. Very nice. Rear output flange we tied it up before. A little bit of poo on the thread and just at the top of the spline there. The last bits.
Now you're probably uh, rubbing your eyes thinking I'm seeing double. Uh, but no, the one on the ground here, that's the one that's just been built. And the one under the vehicle is one that's got the 47 Mark gears in it, an old set of Mark gears. It's got chromoly trail gear output shafts and it's got the trail gear rear disconnect. Just got to find time now to swap them over before the next event. Uh, with the one that's under the truck at the moment, uh, we're going to be splitting that. So the rear disconnect is going to be separate. Um, and whether we put the four sevens in a standard box. Brian and I have been friends for a long, long time, well over 20 years. Uh, and he's my go-to man for my diffs, transfers, any questions I have. Uh, he's a, a world of knowledge when it comes to Toyotas. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And as always, thanks for watching.